Hello, and welcome to The Box On Screen, our dip into the vast film and television archive whose home is The Box in Plymouth, where I am the art curator. For this episode, I'm at the amazing Barbara Hepworth Museum in St. Ives, once home to one of the most important artists of the 20th century. And let me tell you, it is such a thrill to be here. I'm delighted to be joined here today by Anne Barlow, director of the Tate St. Ives, who are custodians of the museum here. Thank you so much for allowing us to be a part of this beautiful space today. Um, and a lot of people might have heard of Dame Barbara Hepworth. How do you think her story as an artist is best told? Well, Barbara Hepworth is one of the most significant artists of the 20th century, and over the several decades of her working life, she made almost 600 sculptures. Um, she is probably best known for her interest in direct carving, uh, which was a move away from more traditional techniques of making um, objects in clay. And so in the 1920s, and particularly in the 1930s, what you see is her moving from some early figurative sculpture to what she becomes really known for, which are these kind of beautiful abstract shapes and forms that you see in many of the sculptures around me in this beautiful garden. So I've been researching our film archive at The Box and I've come across a real treasure. It's a documentary from 1973 and it gives a real fascinating insight into Hepworth's life, her inspirations, and in particular, her love of St. Ives. I was brought up in the industrial north and then I lived for 15 years in Hampstead and worked there. But having once experienced living in natural surroundings and with the sea, I realized how much this sort of lay in my background and had picked up with my childhood. And here, it's not only the marvelous light and the fact that I've got more warmth so that I can carve out in the winter, which you certainly couldn't do in London because your hands would stick to the steel tools, but there is a comprehensible community, not just artists, but all people, writers and musicians, and all the local people who have such a natural perception that they're warm neighbors and friends, and one can understand how communities have to integrate. Here, I feel that we're closely bound together for good or bad, or in bad weather or foul weather, and the, the Cornish people here have this an amazing instinct, as indeed they did in the industrial north, about the shapes of things, how to do them, how to be independent and be free and explore and appreciative. And I think it does make a tremendous difference to one's outlook. Every day here is different and a change. I don't remember two days alike. There's such an amazing quality to the film, isn't there, that really transports you back to this town all those years ago. One of my favorite sections of this documentary is when we are in the foundry itself, watching one of her bronzes being cast. It is an incredible scene. Uh, and what's exciting about this period is that in the mid 1950s, Hepworth starts working in bronze for the first time. And at this point, she's already had uh, national and international recognition by being in the Venice, Bien representing Britain in the Venice Biennale, and also being in the Festival of Britain in 1951. And by the mid 50s, in moving into bronze, this allows her to take on major national and international commissions in ways that she can dramatically increase the scale of her sculptures. Uh, so for example, the four square walkthrough, which is in this garden, uh, is one of the most dramatic sculptures she made in the sense of actually imagining it as a body walking through the sculpture rather than only viewing it from the outside or from one position. Uh, she also made single form, uh, which is outside the United Nations um, from the Palais de Danse in, in St. Ives. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. So let's hear again from Hepworth about her excitement for working with this new material. I didn't really begin using bronze until 55 because I could not find 
a way that pleased me. And then I began to think in terms of molten metal. And that began to interest me because I realized that through heat and the molten metal that one had a wide range of texture, which I hadn't been able to use before. I always see my casts and work on them because every cast is a different thing. It has its own personality and it's not a mathematical thing so that there are always adjustments of color and form and edges to be made. But I must confess I'm always delighted to hear that one is safely cast and I can go check up everything. The walkthroughs was extremely exciting to do because you can walk into it and then lean out and gaze out or look up and see the sky through the tops. And it was particularly exciting because I found I had to change all the proportions. Being at 14 feet, proportion changes. So we've heard a lot about Hepworth, the artist, what do we know about Hepworth outside of her work? Well, Hepworth was a mother, uh, and she had a son with her first husband, um, John Skeeping, uh, whose name was Paul, who tragically died in a plane accident in 1953. So she was a person who did experience a lot of grief around that event. She also had triplets with Ben Nicholson, and while she was living and working in St. Ives, she was bringing up those children uh, at the same time as finding as many hours in the day to work as she could, uh, because she was such a uh, kind of passionate, passionately committed to her working practice. She was interested in many other things, including dance and theater and science and technology. And uh, she was also interested in younger artists. Uh, she had uh, studio uh, technicians and assistants who helped her in the later years of her life, most of whom were artists. So one of the last clips that we're going to be looking at today is a newsreel from when Barbara Hepworth was awarded the freedom of St. Ives. Dame Barbara, it's my privilege to present this to you on behalf of the corporation. As you know, I love St. Ives so deeply and I've been I've met with every kindness in all the many years I've lived here and it's not only been my physical home but it's also been my spiritual home and this means a tremendous amount because you've made me I've always been part of it but now you've made me part and it will be an inspiration every day I wake up and go to work in the future. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. It's interesting to see the artist in such a formal civic ceremony, but she was clearly greatly honored by the accolade. And I'd love to know what she and the mayor were talking about. <laughs> Well, she was indeed a very private person, uh, but, but nonetheless, I think that was an incredibly important moment for her. Uh, she described St. Ives as her spiritual home, um, something that she had really begun to feel very much part of over all of the years that she'd lived here. And she was also honored um, round about the same time by being made a bard of Cornwall, uh, which is something that is about a contribution to Cornish language and Celtic culture. And for her, uh, the community was also very important. So she speaks a lot in some of her films around her, the relationships that she made, not just with local artists, but with local people and what it was like to, to live and work in the town. Again, not just as an artist, but also as a person. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for inviting us to join you here today and for sharing all of your fascinating insights into Dame Barbara Hepworth. It's a pleasure. And thank you for joining us on The Box On Screen. Do check out our other content on our YouTube channel.